guys, welcome back to the channel, Sergio from the Sergio Force. Today I wanted to talk about um, building a visual pinball cabinet and particularly going over my cousin's uh, 1977 um, Airborne Avenger V-Pin that I recently built for him. There's been a lot of, uh, I think, uh, a lot of interest in visual pinball as of late. Uh, I think with companies like App Games and Arcade One Up coming out with these uh, miniature V-Pins, uh, which I, I give them kudos for. Um, I think a lot of people are sort of hesitant because they're saying, well, you know, they're not really, you know, the real thing, you know, it doesn't really play like VPX. And listen, guys, I think any company that's willing to provide a, an affordable option uh, to getting people uh, playing a pinball, I think it's a, it's a great thing. Um, not everybody has the budgets to build a full size build, you know, like myself or like my cousin. Not everybody has the space, uh, you know, to, um, you know, to fit a full size machine. Uh, so kudos to these companies. And, you know, it's nice to see, you know, pinball come back again. And I almost feel like it's almost like, you know, arcades as well. You know, for a long time, I think the arcade market was obviously decimated, you know, with uh, home consoles and, and, and whatnot. And so people gotten away from it. Nobody really wanted to get into, you know, these big, heavy, uh, you know, cabinets, restoring them. Um, you know, and so uh, again, it's refreshing to see companies like Arcade One Up bring different options to people uh, that are still willing to enjoy playing these games without having to, you know, fork out thousands and thousands of dollars. So, having said that, um, I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of my cousin's cab. Um, you know, there's been a couple of people that have approached me uh, asking questions uh, on, on how to build a visual pinball machine and what's involved. Um, and so we know the basics, obviously, right? We need computers, we need uh, screens. Uh, really, everything else is entirely up to the uh, the player. Uh, you know, you can make it as simple as you want, or you can make it as complicated as you want, right? So, uh, my cousin's build. We'll start with the uh, with the computer. Uh, it's basically an i7 um, processor, 6700K. Uh, it's got a um, an NVIDIA. I, believe it's an Asus uh, 1080 uh, 6 gigabyte video card and then it's got a 250 gigabyte uh, SSD hard drive and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, visual pinball is very for it's very reliant um, on a graphics card and so when you if you're going to go 1080p you can get away you know with with a 1050 a 1060 when you go 4K, uh, you really need to start looking at, uh, you know, the heavier cards. And so the 1080 is an old card now. I have a 980 Ti on my build, and that's also an old card now because they're into the 3080s now, I think, 8 gigabyte and whatnot. So I don't think you need to go that expensive, but definitely uh, a 1070, a 1080 with 6 gigabytes <clears throat> is advisable. Um, you know, the only time that... Visual Pinball starts to rely on the CPU is more when you're doing uh, videos. Uh, so what I mean by that is if you're, uh, you know, you're using Pinup Popper, uh, you know, as your front end, you've got pup packs going, you're playing these tables with pup packs, uh, then it becomes uh, heavy on the uh, on the CPU. And so it's important to have a good processor as well. You don't necessarily need to go with an i7. You can go with an i5, like something like, you know, an 85, I think, 100K, um, processor you know will do you find it will be a lot you know less expensive so um screens uh 49 inch lg 4k screen the back glass is a samsung 720p lcd and then the dmd is a dell 4.3 uh, aspect ratio um uh, uh, screen so nothing complicated um, as far as other things, uh, other additions to his cab, um, we, uh, I added uh, full surround sound feedback. And so it's got four exciters. And uh, I'm just going to take you guys off the tripod here. And uh, I apologize, you know, for the shakiness. And so I'm going to flip you guys back here. So that's... You know, uh, the Daytone, uh, sorry, the, yeah, I believe it's a, a, a Daytone um, exciter. There's four of these, one on each corner of the cab. Um, and then what I did uh, is I added a, a five inch sub uh, to the uh, rear pair uh, exciters. And then let me bring you around the front here. And hard to see, uh, I've placed a five inch sub also in the middle of the um, 
two front exciters and kind of hard to see because they're hiding down there but if I flip you guys it's kind of hard to see but you'll you, you get the idea it's actually right underneath this this piece of wood here and so that's all powered up by two amplifiers these are just lapai uh, 168 ha amps again i'll leave the links down below uh with the description um those power up you know both the the front and the rear exciter subs and then for his back glass uh i just went this hard to see but um there's uh two pc speakers uh left and right uh and then you've got you know your um you know your sub over here so and that's all controlled through uh obviously the volume pod and uh there's a volume uh pod right over here <clears throat> you know that uh you know uh, adjusts the sound um you know is up or down right and then uh what i also did is um i added service switches uh just like his uh like a real pinball machine uh adjust the sound and all that good stuff and so the coin door is actually uh uh, this switch right here, the left uh, coin shoot, if you push the button down, it acts as opening the coin door and then you could use the switches here, uh, change the settings, add credits, etc, etc. Um, so that's that. Uh, and then what I did uh, was also add uh, full uh, direct uh, output framework, so DOF. And so with DOF we have obviously the uh, 24 volt contactors. I got two on each side um, for your left and right flippers. Um, I did uh, these 12 volt for solenoids. Um, these uh, act as your slings. And then back here, I did three more solenoids that act as uh, your left, uh, your center, uh, and your right bumper. And so I've seen a lot of people add more than five. Uh, they'll add another row of three somewhere along here. Um, you know what the beauty about this is you can go into your DOF uh, config tool program and you can actually combine um, you know these three bumpers uh, rear bumpers as your middle bumpers and so when the table triggers uh, you know the middle bumper sounds um, you'll still hear these three guys go off so it's, it's pretty cool uh, I don't feel you lose anything by doing it that way um, other than that, um, we added, uh, or I added a shaker as well. This is a, a true, kind of hard for you guys to see, but this is a real Stern 12-volt uh, shaker. Um, you know, they're not very expensive. I don't know why people uh, end up uh, rigging their own, uh, you know, shakers when these are fairly affordable, but again, to each, his, you know, their own. And then I did, obviously, uh, blue and red 12-volt beacons, as you can see here. And then I also did a fan. Um, funny enough, when I bought this fan, um, this thing came in the mail and I said, oh my God, I go like, this looks so tiny. It's not gonna have any sort of power whatsoever. And I think it's gonna be a waste. And uh, first game I played, I forget what it was, but I was actually quite surprised. This fan is a lot smaller and a lot more powerful than the one that I have. Uh um so you know and i think this one looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing i wish i would have uh you know i would have known i would have you know gotten this instead of the other one for my cab but you know that's neither here or there um other than that uh let me just flip you around over here um using real uh pinball leaf buttons guys don't cheap out on on your buttons when you're building your cabs don't go with a hap uh buttons don't go with the sandwich don't do anything like that you want to go with a true leaf switch like you you can see here like you can control um you know the flipper um you know um however you you, you know you want it's kind of hard to explain i'm not the best at explaining things but you guys know what i mean right there's a lot more control with a leaf than a simple um on off you know arcade switch um so these are not very expensive and they make a world of difference um then i also uh his uh plunger mount i bought from oak micros again i can leave a link down below um it was only 20 bucks us uh 3d uh printed and uh, you know it holds the plunger in nice and snug 
Um, oh, and one other thing I forgot, um, the gear motor as well. Um, a lot of people simulate um, the gear motor uh, through the uh, VP preferences, you know, so they'll let basically SSF control the gear motor. Um, I'm a big fan of the gear motor. I think it adds so much depth uh, to the table, especially when you hear, you know, the certain sounds like the Medieval Madness, you know, Castle Gate closing, the Theora Magic trunk spinning, um, the Cactus Canyon, the train moving, and you hear the gear motor, it's pretty cool. And to me, there's no SSF sound that replicates, you know, the, the sound of a real, uh, you know, motor. This is a 30, no, sorry. This is just a 12 volt uh, motor. Um, actually, no, it's not. I'm sorry, it's a 24 volt motor. Um, you know, so you could step it down to 12 volts if you want. I wanted a full 24 because I like the sound of it. And, uh, you know, it's so easy to connect, like, two screws into, you know, this brace, and off you go. Um, other than that, there's your power supplies back there, uh, just your 12 and 24 volt. Um, and then uh, just kind of finishing off, I have uh, this little breaker board here is just basically breaking the, uh, the voltages down from this power supply. So this power supply is pu putting out 12 and 5 volts, and this is just basically like, you know, uh, a breaker board, if you will. Uh, these little three uh, green MOSFET boards uh, are where all my toys for my DOF are, are plugged in. Uh, again, I got one uh, board for my 24 volt um, uh, toys, which in this case will be the gear motor and the contactors. And then I've got my 12 volt, which basically feeds the fan, the shaker, the beacons, uh, and then the solenoids as well. And then. Uh, Last but not least, I've got uh, my uh, KLZ, uh, the uh, Pinscape, which is sitting underneath here. Um, I bought this KL Shield from Arno's uh, shop. This thing is great, man. Like, it's got all these little, you know, screw uh, connectors. It just makes adding the wire so much easier. Uh, it looks neater, looks a lot cleaner, and they're not very expensive. Uh, the guy is a genius. I, I love this little, um, this little tool right here. Uh, just makes everything nice and neat. And neat. So um, that's kind of it. Um, you know, there's not really much more to go through here. Uh, everything is pretty simplistic. Uh, I did also just bring you around the, the front here. Uh, I did add a credit button on the coin door as well. Just because his coin shoots were seized, they weren't working. And I wanted to simulate like a real coin, so to speak. Um but yeah, guys, other than that, uh, that's it. Um, again, it's this is a lot uh, a lot of work, um, you know, a lot of wiring, uh, a lot of patience, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But uh, the overall uh, result uh, is very satisfying, especially when you play your first game, um, you know, and you've got everything kind of coming together. It really puts a smile on your face, and, and, and it's, it makes it well worth it. And the best thing is, and if something doesn't work, uh, you'll typically know what it is uh, because you've put it together and you'll have a certain idea of, uh, of where that problem, uh, you know, may be coming from. And that right there, you know, diagnosing your own problems, um, or that's, that's uh, you know, worth its weight in gold uh, versus trying to rely on somebody, uh, you know, to fix it for you. So, yeah, guys, that's uh, an overview on my uh, cousin's cab. Um, you know, this is a side art here, uh, still all original. It's an Airborne Avenger. Uh, he's going to be picking up the machine soon. And, uh, you know, he's going to be posting this on his channel. He's got a huge following on YouTube. He's got over, I think he's got almost 2 million subscribers. And he's going to be posting the uh, the machine up uh, once he gets it home. And I suspect I'm probably going to get flooded uh, with uh, with comments and questions. Um, because he, he did mention he wants to, to advertise my services. So, um, which, again, if I'm... You know, if I can help somebody build their machine, uh, answer some questions, uh, you know, makes makes my day. And uh, that's it, guys. Uh, video's going on 15 minutes. Um, I applaud all of you for sitting there and, and listening to me ramble on for 15 minutes. I don't know how you do it, uh, but I do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, guys, that's it. Uh, any uh, questions, comments, please feel free to obviously comment below. If you like this kind of content and you haven't subscribed, you know, please do so. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time.